right? And for the poor bums on the corner, you will be their food. You will be dessert today. That's how that will go down. So the tumbru. The tumbru is another form of cart. As you can see, it was open, but also this is a, this is a torture bite. It's called the ducking stool at the same time. We'll go over there. We'll go over that shortly, okay? So the rocks, you have to understand that in market, we, the, the farmers could sell all their bad produce because the people would have to have produce to throw at the, uh, the, people, that, the people in the pillory or in the stocks or in the gulls cart or whatever is going on. There's going to be a criminal today and he's going to be the entertainment. So the head cage, as it was stated in the branks, the, the head cage is a, uh, something that was worn when we walked you around the city. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes this would be the only crime, I mean, this would be the only charge for your crime. They're like, nigga, we gonna walk your ass from the four corners of the city, you gonna go to every gate, nigga, wearing the, wearing the head cage, okay? And all the children is gonna throw the, the rotten tomatoes at your ass, and that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so the flogging, we got the flogging going down with the, and sometimes right up in here, they put pieces of bone, tar, glass, rock, round little balls, and even they, they have one called the scorpion with hooks on it, and the hooks are designed to catch onto your ribs and pull. Okay, now, it was in the reign of King Henry VIII. And in the year 1530 that the famous whipping act was instituted, directing that vagrants were to be carried to some market town or other place, and there, to, and there tied to the end of a cart naked and beaten with whips throughout the market town or other place, till the bloody, I mean, till the body shall be bloody by reason of such whipping. Okay. It was formerly the custom in London and other places at the time of executions for parents to whip their children, so as to impress upon their minds the awful lessons of the gallows. Executions were, often, were very often occurring for people who were hanged for trifling offenses. All right. So basically, they was taking you. To, they'd take them to the execution and whoop their ass right there in the market while they watching somebody getting killed. So I guess that's pressing the pain on the trauma. I mean, that is mixing the trauma. I mean. They've mastered their trauma, man. So ball and chain, ball and chain here. We have ball and chain. This is the only real one that's in existence from the old world. Okay, Bilbo's. This is the original ankle bracelet. Okay. And I know you've probably seen these before when, when researching into history. And you never knew their name because that's not where they come from. They, they, they weren't created for African slaves. They were created for European criminals. Okay, just like this tongue terror right here, okay? <laughs> the tongue terror, we apply this red hot, hot, okay? And we open the mouth and we rip out the tongue of the blasphemer. Okay, of the heretic. The tongs. These were the used for the ripping off of the toenails, fingernails, um, the nose, the lips, the teeth, the ears, the eyelids. Um, what else? Your nipples. Um, that little pink part down there you got hidden down there. Um, yeah, we rip off your little wee wee. With our <laughs> hey, that's what these things is used for, man. Seriously, the thumb screws. Okay. Um. We we obliterate the thumb. We crush all the bone matter on the thumbs. Notice another heart we have right here. Okay. And we have the iron gag. The iron box on the inside is forced into the mouth 
and the collar fastened behind his neck. The victim's screams are stiff, are stifled, so as not to disturb the conversation of the torturers. The small hole in the gag, if plugged with a fingertip, blocked the passage of air and caused suffocation. Okay, these were also worn on the way to the gallows, on the way to the scaffold, or on the way to being burnt at the stake. So you couldn't be a blast from a, you couldn't blaspheme the process of you being burnt. We don't want to hear your vulgarities. We do not want to hear your profanities when we are about to burn your ass. Okay. The heretic catcher. It was believed that if a witch or a wizard, um, if you touched a witch or a wizard, you would, in in essence, go to hell and become part of the devil's league. Okay. <laughs> And so you were not to touch the witch. So they would put these on them and march them in, okay? And this right here is called the Spanish collar, okay? No. Okay. The Iron Crown. A late 16th century iron crown of torture that was heated red hot and then lowered onto the head of a victim, primarily used on anyone who conspired to steal the throne or commit uh, um, to steal the throne or commit the assassination of a ruler. And we see right here the iron crown is right here in this painting. As I stated earlier, you see them using the tongs red hot to rip off the flesh and the sinews. And the date is 1514. And notice the thin metal. So it could get red hot quick. Okay. Now the, the Nobby Crown, which is another form. You know, another crown that they used, and they would usually make them wear these on the way to the scaffold once again. And they'd be butt naked. So you'd be butt naked walking to the scaffold, and somebody pushes you with a stick on a collar, and then you got a branks on your head, and then you might be wearing one of these crowns too. So you wear one of these crowns, the knobby crown, and it's screwed in right here, as we can see, to puncture holes into the skull. All right. This one is called the Breast Ripper. This one is called the Spanish Spider Breast Ripper. Okay, this one got all sides of it. And I don't, uh, I think this one is like uh, England or could be. But they were applied red hot. All right. And we'd sear off the flesh of the titty off the woman. All right. Now. In Scotland, oh, and let me state this as well. This was used for a criminal offense. So women who killed their children and women who were adulterers and women who were thieves and, and uh, prostitute thieves is really what it was. It wasn't, the it wasn't the necessary fact that you were a prostitute. It was the fact that you were one of these prostitutes that set men up and robbing them and getting them killed and all that type of stuff. So we use this on you, nice and red hot. And also a way they punished uh, they punished women of who who killed their babies. Emphasized was they made them wear the corpse of the of the infant until the corpse rotted all the way into bones. They used to make them wear it, wear it around their neck like a necklace. Okay. So, in Scotland, the jogs were usually fashioned to a church door, a tree in a churchyard, the post of a church gate, a market cross, or a market tron. 
or a weighing post and not infrequently to prison doors. These would also be outside the city at the gate and prisoners would have to sit there as well to forewarn those that came into the city. So persons neglecting to attend church on Sunday were frequently put into the jogs. This was majority a church torture and uh, if you acted a fool in church they just put you into this and it was a chain with a collar on it attached to the concrete wall as you can see here okay now the stocks okay in old times they didn't put these stools right here if you were too short to fit into the stocks then they put you in there anyways and your feet would and your body would just pull the hate pull the weight of your um of your whole being and then your your neck would break and your hands would turn black and blood would come out your nose, your mouth, your ears, and your eyes. And it has been documented like that. Yeah. This is the pillory bird cage. You have to understand that if you were to do your own research with this subject, as you'll be going over several different time periods in several different countries, the word stocks and the word pillory can be uh, interchangeable sometimes, but as to be hardcore with it these are the stocks right here and this is the pillory bird cage and this pillory word can also be interchangeable with the gibbet word so anyways in the pillory you'd hang up until you rotted sometimes they would give you charges of sitting in here for three hours a day for one day of every month for the rest of your life okay and people would poke you with sticks, throw rocks at you, throw food at you, and whatnot. But then again, they'd also have a lot of these sitting in, uh, sitting at the crossways of, of the roads, sitting at cross sections of roads, and it would be nothing but bones in there because the person completely, fully decomposed. And there was time periods in England where they said that there was one of these at every single cross section with somebody hanging in it at a different stage of decomposition. Now, in the pillory, depending on the temper of the crowd, the pillory could be either a comparatively mild form of punishment or a death sentence. If an unpopular prisoner was pilloried, a large mob would gather carrying stones, mud pies, rotten eggs, and decayed vegetables. In London, the vegetable stalls at, Co at Covent Garden did a brisk trade selling worthless produce for this purpose. After the current Jack Ketch, which is a nickname for executioner, had fastened the prisoner in the pillory, he had to run for his life as the shower of rocks and garbage started. As the prisoner could not use his hands, he often suffocated from the sticky mask covering his face. If he had any money, he would bribe Ketch to stand below the pillory's platform and keep wiping his face with a long pole. Okay. This is the gibbet iron. Which is sort of just like a pillory. Except for, as you can see here, there is a division in the legs. So these were usually made specifically for your body's uh, size. And if you were obese or fat, they would make a joke out of it by making it too small for you and forcing you in it, as it is a torture device anyways. These, right, these devices are, uh, are famously known for leaving the top part of the skull inside the cage when all the rest of the bones have fallen down to nothing. Okay? And that's because the Jimmy Iron was so tightly made on the human. Now, you also got to understand that sometimes they would put tar on the person and then set them a fire while they were hanging in one of these. Okay. Now, Mount Falcon. 
Think about this right here. Take one of these and then put it right here and one of these, okay? So you got 45 slots right here, my friends. And there was a gibbet iron in each one of these with a body rotting at a different stage, as you can see over here as well. And see the birds that were flying and feasting on all the rotten bodies. Now, if you were a new criminal, they walk you in here and they hang you up in one of these things. And you probably see in one of these slots a guy that was alive. Another slot where there's nothing but bones. And then another slot where there's a guy that's probably decomposing for the past six months. He's in the six-month stage of decomposition. <laughs> okay. So you'll be seeing and smelling all of that when the wind blows. And then you'll be watching birds picking on everybody. And the birds may not even wait. They're so used to it. They've been eating on so many bodies right here that they may not even wait for you to die. And they say, hey, they just hung up a new one. He's fresh. I like my, I like my meat warm. Fuck that bullshit. I'm going to come down here and give me taste. Okay? So this is the scaffold. Now, in relation to what I was saying about Lowe's, the department store scaffold in today's language would be a building that you use on the side of uh, skyscrapers to clean windows and or to build and construct apartment buildings okay the scaffold is huge for that what you see up here is the process called breaking the wheel but this is the scaffold okay it is the platform of death basically it is the platform where we hold the executions and the entertainment is viewed now breaking the wheel we, t we twist the limbs in said fashion through the spokes, okay? Like this here. And if you see another one where we can drag, we can put a person on a wheel and then drag them on spikes. As we notice here, there's a spiked wheel. And we hook these spikes within the back on the person's ribs and we twist them on, we twist and we twirl the, uh, the wheel and it goes over a fire underneath here. And the fire right here will slowly roast the person. And then right here we have another wheel. And this wheel has an iron rim on it on both sides, if you see. Now, breaking on the wheel, especially on the continent, was no was so common that it almost became the standard manner of executing criminals. A large wheel like a cartwheel was mounted vertically on a scaffold. The con the condemned was tied spread eagle on the wheel his arm and legs extended as far as possible and fastened to the rim so they were approximately at right angles to the spokes the executioner then broke each bone separately with an iron bar finally killing the pr prisoner with a blow across the chest in certain cases the final blow was not given the executioner broke the man's ribs and the wheel was then mounted on a pole set through the hub the condemned being left to die slowly a variation of this torture considered, uh, consisted of putting each of the condemned limbs one after the other in a wooden trough with vertical slits cut in the sides. The executioner then used a small but very heavy wheel with an iron rim that he dropped through the slits in succession, crushing the limb by degrees, starting at the extremity and working up to the body. This device was usually used in torture chambers because it was not so suitable for public display as breaking on the wheel. Okay. The cauldron. Now. Okay. Other martyrs were cooked in pots, cauldrons, and frying pans. Some of the pots had detachable handles so the um, so the executioners could insert the handles after the victim had been immersed for some time in boiling oil or water and carry the pot around the arena without having the handles become too hot uh, to hold. St. Boniface died in this manner, his knees having first been doubled up and his head tied uh, to them so he would fit in the pot. The cauldrons were much bigger and could hold several Christians at the same time. The victims were tied together, one man's ankle to the next man's wrist, and put in the cauldron while the water was still cold. Then the fire was lighted and the struggles of the prisoners to escape while roped together afforded much amusement. Unlike the frying pan used by Antiochus, 
the pans in the arenas were large enough to hold uh, an entire man. Okay? Now, you have to understand that they also had a process called parboiling where they would boil the amputated parts and the heads of the bodies okay then after that they would dip it in tar and then hang them up because it would preserve it for longer for for people to see now this parboiling was with cumin seed um, salt and I think lemon or some other ingredient and Yeah, that's what parboiling was, and they would also do that with the human heads. Now, boiled to death. In the year 1531, when Henry VIII was king, an act was passed for boiling prisoners to death. The preamble of the statute states that one Richard Roos or Coke and Cook by putting poisonous by putting poison in some food intended for the household of the Bishop of Rochester and for the poor of the parish in which his lordship's palace was situated in Lambeth Marsh occasioned the death of a man and a woman and the serious illness of several others. He was found guilty of treason and sentenced to be boiled to death without benefit of the clergy. That is, that no abatement of the sentence was to be made on account of his ecclesiastical connection, nor to be allowed any indemnity such as the commonly uh, such was commonly the privilege of clerical offenders. He was publicly boiled to death at Smithfield, and the act ordained that all manner of prisoners should meet with the same doom henceforth. Sawed in half. This is where it goes down. You hang them upside down. You know, Johnny gets on the other side. We get to sign back and forth, back and forth. They would do this with you hanging upside down. And they also had a process of doing this when you standing up. They would already have slits in two plaques of wood that are vertical. And then they would have you stand up in, in between those two packs and then just, I mean, between those two planks and then just keep on sawing back and forth, starting at the top of your head. But they just they started doing it like this by majority rule because the person could live longer and feel more pain, which is the true definition of torture, is we want you to live as long as possible so you can feel the highest level amount of pain. Okay. This is a death by a thousand cuts. This is a Chinese torture. I put it in here because it was interesting. The strips of flesh were then cut off with a sharp knife and the shirt tightened again. A more common form was simply to cut off portions of the body one after another according to a carefully devised plan that would keep the victim alive until the end. However, this generally meant that the number of cuts had to be limited to 120, 72, 36, or 24. The death of 24 cuts went like this. Cuts 1 and 2, the eyebrows, 3 and 4, the shoulders, 5 and 6, the breasts, 7 and 8, the forearms, 9 and 8, 9 and 10, the upper arms, 11 and 12, the buttocks, 12 and 13, I mean 13 and 14, the calves, 15 and 16, heels, 17 and 18, hands, 19 and 20, arms, 21 and 22, feet, 23 and 24, legs. This is the rake. The origin to the rake you used to use with mommy raking up the leaves in the front yard. This would be applied real hot and it would drag the bone out of the back. This is called the barrel roll. Okay. You can die in this one, but it's most likely that you won't. depending on how big the spikes are. They used to use this one on heels. Push people down the heels while inside the barrel. All right. 
Now, burning alive was from early times the recognized method of uprooting heretical notions of religious belief of every class. The first to suffer from this cause in England was Alvin, who died at the stake in the year AD 304. Since his day, thousands have suffered death on account of their religious belief through intolerance. But that is not a subject we intend dealing with at the present time. Burning alive was the most common form of, a, of torturous death employed in the Middle Ages. One method was used by the Spanish Inquisition has already been described. The most common technique was simply to tie the victim to a stake and surround her. The victims were originally women with faggots. But sometimes the stake was surrounded by a circular wall of faggots and opening left an opening being left in the wall so the condemned could be led through it and tied to the stake. The gap was then filled in. This is how Joan of Arc died. Although the artistic pur purposes, she is usually shown tied on top of a heap of faggots. The faggot wall was so high that after her death, the executioners had to pull it down with bill hooks so the crowd could see that her charred remains and be convinced that the witch hadn't escaped by art magic. Okay. By the late 18th century, only individuals guilty of treason could be burned, but treason included counterfeiting or poisoning your husband, but not your wife. According to law, counterfeiting was a defiance of the king's authority, hearsay was a defiance of God, and a wife stood in the same relation to her husband as she did to God. Okay. These are the original faggots right here. There is an account of burning at Lincoln in 1722. Eleanor Elsom was condemned to death for the murder of her husband and was ordered to be burnt at the stake. She was clothed in a cloth and made like a ship saturated with tar and her limbs were also smeared with the same inflammable substance. While a tar bonnet had been placed on her head, she was brought one of the prison barefoot. She was brought out of the prison barefoot and being put on a hurdle was drawn on a sledge to the place of execution near the gallows. Upon